Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Monday movie. I'm Mr. Blue Summers. So this week, you'll have to excuse the slightly crushed format. Um, my monitor recently decided not to support resolutions above 1024, and it is exactly as horrible as it sounds. So uh, and for the foreseeable future, um, we're going to be I'm going to have very little space to work with, so I'm going to struggle to keep all of the important UI items in this little space here, so you'll have to bear with me. That said, this week we have a really awesome topic. We're going to be looking at um, UVW channels and what they can do for you. How you can take an object like this pillar and, and base that I've got here, and even though it already has UVWs laid out, and even though it already has... Um, you know, a material set up for it, you can still append a few details to it without having to redo the UVWs and without having to edit the incoming map that you want to apply. So this is a really great technique for just quick and dirty. All I want is this little detail and I don't want to spend three and a half hours putting it in. So let's get started. I'm going to take a quick render here. Uh, it's a little bit dark. Um, Give me one second here. I want you to be able to see this. Yeah, there we go. HDRI lighting for the win. So what you can see here is just a, a simple pillar object. And notice that this material is continuous. You know, spanning from here to here, up into the pillar. It's all one map. And we need to be able to append a little bit of displacement to this material without disturbing this UVW layout and without having to edit the incoming map. Let's get started. I'm going to select my object here and for these four faces around the base I want to apply a displacement map to kind of chew out a little bit of it, you know, like um, you know, a little bit of weather damage or something. Now in order to do that I've created uh, a copy of the original material that I used. The original materials up here. It's got a diffuse map, specular, glossy, and bump maps all applied. And just for the sake of demonstration, you don't necessarily have to do this. I've created a separate ma uh, material, which is this one right here. I called it concrete displacement. And what's different about this one is we're going to be uh, including that displacement material in here. So let's give it a try. I'm going to copy the incoming displacement map without editing into into my diffuse color slot so that I can see it in the viewport. It's right here. This is actually a really awesome map. I like it a lot. It's from the 3D Total Texture Library. Highly recommended. Now with my four faces selected, I'm going to apply a UVW map modifier. And because each of these are isolated faces, uh, they're large, they're flat, I'm just going to apply face the face uh, mapping type. And that's going to apply this material, or this map, squarely on each face. Now what's important to note here is that this has effectively ruined the uh, mapping for these faces. So the question becomes, how can we get it, we just want this aspect of the material mapped like this, and the rest of the material mapped the way it used to be. We can do that with UVW channels. If you scroll down here in the UVW mapping modifier, you find the channel group. And this allows you to say, well, apply this mapping to channel 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever, of these faces. Each face can have multiple UVW mappings associated with it. So when I change the mapping to 2, suddenly you see that it ruined the way that we had the map set up. Can you guess why that is? Yeah, that's right. That's because this map is still associated with map channel 1, which you find right here under the coordinates rollout. If I change this map to 2, you'll notice that the mapping snaps back to the way we wanted, directly on each face. The best part is that it won't affect the, uh, the rest of the material because all the other maps are still map channel 1. And this can be extended beyond displacement maps. You could take this, say, map channel 1 is going to be diffuse map, and it has a UVW mapping associated with it. And map channel 2 is going to be my bump map. And for my bump map, I want this UV layout. 
you know, you can really extend this to, to a lot of things. But we're going to keep it simple. We're going to stick with this placement for now. So, okay, looks like we've got what we want. I'm going to bring my diffuse map back here, instance. I'm going to bring my displacement map down into my material. Here we go, instance. And I'm just going to set it to negative uh, 8 or something because uh, I want it to dig out and, and it's, um, it's white in the, in the hole. That's not going to work. So, Okay, let's take a render, see how this looks. And there you have it. The original mapping is undisturbed, still continuous. And we've chewed out a section of the pillar exactly where we wanted it, exactly how we wanted it. And that's sort of a quick demonstration of UVW channels and what they can do for you. They can be a huge time saver. So until next week, I encourage you to check this out, give it a try for yourself, of course, and see what it can do for you. Let it be your time saver. Until next week, I might be able to hammer out another tutorial before Friday. Don't count on it, but I'll try. Um, and of course, for all you, you on YouTube, don't forget to visit the website, www.mrbluesummers.com. Until next Monday, take care. Happy modeling.